as if Airdrie didn't have enough troubles after their seven goal dubbing in Aberdeen and their cup exit at Clyde Bank in the last week manager Alec McDonald has to do without Walter Kidd, Kenny Black, Evan Balfour through suspension and Chris Honor through injury so that's very much a team born out of stretched resources and that may put a greater onus on goalkeeper John Martin at 34, Airdrie's longest serving player and a man who has frequently provided inspiration to his colleagues he may well have that opportunity again today Celtic manager Liam Brady shows confidence in the injury-free members of the team which scraped through in the cup against Clyde in midweek. Andy Payton and Joe Miller, though, are unfit, so Rudy Vata comes into the starting lineup, as does Frank McAvenny, who makes his debut in his second spell at Celtic Park. He represents a major gamble for Liam Brady, and surely the last chance to prove he can still perform at top level. The referee this afternoon is Bill Innes from Steps, who's in his third season as a Grade 1 official and has just been nominated as fourth official for the match in March in Madrid. It's letting Madrid against Olympiacos of Greece. It'll surely be warmer and drier on that occasion. And again declared on by virtue of the sterling work done by the Airdrie ground staff all day. But conditions are still worsening by the minute. playing surface was scrutinized very carefully on various occasions in the last hour and a half or so by the referee before he was satisfied the game could start but with heavy rain and sleet continuing so clearly some concern about the match lasting 90 minutes certainly not ideal circumstances for Celtic to attempt to get back in the lead rails Playing on a very tight ground, it's eight yards narrower than Celtic Park and two yards shorter with heavy rain and wind. And an Airdrie team, which will be fired up to get back in the rails also without a win in their last seven matches, in which they've only scored one goal. So Celtic not the only side struggling in front of goal. We kicked it in by Boyd, coming off the head there of Jimmy Sanderson. Comfortable catch there by John Martin, Jimmy Sanderson, clearly not in any way depressed by the conditions. Calloway's head up, that's back of any. Allowing Slater to take over, they both play for West Ham United, of course. This is McNally. Long ball, seeking out McAvenny. quite content to settle down at the start of the match uh, well aware of the usual blistering start from Celtic at the beginning of a match all skidding away to the coin here the first chance of the match excellent goalkeeping well the conditions clearly fooled Caesar and allowed coin to go in behind him with that attempt on goal Martin full stretch right off for Caesar Plenty of time and space here for Mark McNally. He's 21 years old. Sanderson with Watson. Watson wearing nine, but playing in central defence as one of the markers. With John Collins, faced by Sanderson. Retaining possession well. Slater free on the left. Back again with Collins. There's McAvenny. Returned in by Coin. It's the opening goal for Celtic. And the Airdrie players protesting about offside, but the referee checked with the linesman. And this is all right. There's McAvenny's header. He rolled it over the line before. No, it squirmed away from Martin. And Coin was on his own. Ideal start for Celtic, especially in these conditions. The goal coming in seven minutes. And the combination there of McAvenny and Coyne paying off. A left poaching by Tommy Coyne with a fine flashing header from McAvenny. Sanderson lost it forward, looking for Owen Coyle. He's away from Gillespie. Was he held? The referee says so, yes. 
McNally provided the cover, but Coyle did well, turning there away from Gillespie. He certainly appeared to be held in that manoeuvre. Well, Gary Gillespie wasn't happy about this decision, but I reckon it was all right, and that deflection almost gave. Airdrie the equaliser. It's a corner kick. Disappointment there for Coyle. Coyle gets the ball in the second attempt, but still can't find a teammate. Good play from midfield involving Slater and McIverney. Rata did well. This is McNally. Slater again. Stepping away from Sanderson. Good handling again by Martin. A clear indications that Stuart Slater is in the mood and has a lot of confidence. Galloway has to be careful here with Lawrence. The wrestling goes on. The referee says six of one and half a dozen of the other. Allows Galloway to come forward. with McAvenny. This is Collins. A misunderstanding there. Kirkwood playing it into space for Lawrence. And he too misjudged that. Allowing Gillespie to step in. Conditions undoubtedly now playing an important part in the proceedings. Surprising there to see Galloway try to run through the water laden midfield with the ball at his feet just on the half hour mark now missed there by McStay chance it on here that's great goalkeeping by Bonner it was Jimmy Boyle who took advantage of the slip by McStay but what great anticipation was shown by Pat Bonner Sanderson breaking in the back for about the first time in the match It's hectic in there, and they keeping a close eye on things. Still saw nothing amiss with all these hefty challenges. Here comes Coyne. Martin's in trouble. Serious for Martin. Coyne was going away from the danger area. As the interpretation of the referee was will decide the colour of card for John Martin. It can't be a penalty kick, of course. Well outside the penalty area. The referee has decided that denied Coyne a clear goal-scoring opportunity. If he decides that, it's a red card. If not, it'll be yellow. Now there's the interpretation, and I think, in terms of the rules, the referee's absolutely right. Well, in these conditions, John Martin committed, clearly misjudged that, thought he would get to the ball ahead of Tommy Coyne, who dragged the ball away. The goalkeeper sliding into the Celtic striker. It certainly wasn't a clear goal-scoring opportunity. Had Coyne stayed on his feet, he still had a great deal to do. An interpretation which will relieve John Martin, and certainly one I think is, is perfectly justified. No danger though for Airdrie. Back of any. Comfortably taken there by Martin, who is taking some abuse from the Celtic support does at that end of the field. Free kick given to Airdrie. The having words with Mike Galloway. Sanderson's free kick. Led into the feet of Owen Coyle. It was well challenged by Boyd. Here's Caesar. Collins going into the tackle. That could have been a penalty. Well, the referee has chosen to give a corner kick, and I find that remarkable. Well, Alan Lawrence looking up here. Lawrence in the clear. Collins diving into that challenge. Well, that, for me, was a clear penalty kick. Well, we're in the final few seconds of the opening 45 minutes, although there has been... A amount of injury time. The referee chooses to blow it all. That's very tough stuff indeed. Both players going for the ball. Will Galloway and Stewart as Coin breaks on the right. Laying it in early for McAvenny. And a dream start for McAvenny denied by the mud in front of goal. Coin gave him a golden opportunity. This ball came across. 
certainly should out of the play there. Machiavelli at full stretch, knocking the ball away from Martin. And well, I need to may have gone away to the target anyway, but it's played away calmly by Watson. Here's Reed. Well, that's what's so farcical, the ball sticking there in the water. Next day wins it back for Celtic. Here's Machiavelli. Collins with a shot. stay initially then Frank McAvenny laying this into the path of Collins quite deliberately for the first time shot which just shaves the crossbar helped on by John Martin's fingertip touch last opportunity perhaps in the first half for Celtic to snatch a second Stuart Slater plays it in well taken on the line there by John Martin Arthur's head up. Good high corner kick. Vata going to attack the ball aggressively, getting up well here to this. Good header. Well taken by Martin. But indeed it was the last attack of the first half, which has been much more entertaining than I think we were entitled to expect in these dreadful circumstances, as far as playing conditions are concerned. And for Tommy Coyne, another moment to remember came after just seven minutes. Ball played in by John Collins, a flashing header by McAvenny, parried by John Martin, and Coyne was on the spot to make the half-time score. Adrian Hill, Celtic won, but will we have a second half? It's in the hands of referee Ennis. Well, not even these dreadful conditions can depress these Celtic supporters, enjoying the fact their side is leading by a goal to nil, and looking for more in the second half. The referee has made the decision for the second half that the game can continue. But it must be really touch and go now. See the puddles forming there inside the centre circle. And in the surrounding areas now, it's getting worse by the second. Here he set off in an attempt to snatch something of this match, bearing in mind their potential relegation difficulties. So I think it's a question of restoring some faith among their supporters. Here's David Kirkwood. Now Stuart. Kirkwood again. Headed on there by Sanderson. And a tangle at the edge of the area. Slater and Jack. It's a free kick to Airdrie. He appears to be enjoying himself hugely. Always good to see some smiles on a football pitch these days. Paul McStay in the end of the wall, lining it up with Pat Bonner. Referee ensuring the wall retreats enough. Doyle takes it. It can be very dangerous in that position of Coyle. He proved that in the first half with one which is deflected just wide. That time, though, no threat to Bonner. Jerry Craney preparing to come on. Tommy Craig drawing the linesman's attention to that. And I wonder if the feeling is that McIverney has done enough. In his first match. No, well, it's Tommy Coyne who took a knock late in the first half. So Craney comes on to partner McIverney. Good control from McIverney. Denied any space by Stewart, but an illegal challenge in the eyes of the referee, so a free kick to Celtic. McNally with a free kick. Craney goes in. Gives a free kick to Airdre, and he's going to take action against Jerry Craney. Well, let's see why, because Mark McNally sent over a very good free kick, attempting ball as Martin was underneath it. In went Craney. Well, I wonder whether he thinks he handled. I don't think he did. The ball finished in the net, and Craney is being booked, and I reckon that will be for handball. And I wonder if the referee may have misjudged that.
Smith going in behind McNally. Stepping inside Gillespie, it's good play. That was well hit and spilled out from Bonner. Well, Andy Smith has now made a big impact. That was good play coming inside Gary Gillespie. A very difficult shot in these conditions for any goalkeeper. Spilled out of Bonner's grasp, but he got some help in defence there. behind it though good corner kick this well Jack challenging there it may have come off a defender headed away there by Gillespie Stuart forward there's Coyle Gillespie in command here at the back using Pat Bonner oh that's a careless one Comedy of errors in defence there for Celtic. They've come to no harm though. Well, they may do now. Reid tries to get away from McStay. Collins gets away from Paul Jack. A lucky man, I think. They didn't make contact with Collins. Now, frantic action there in defence. Gillespie and Bonner trying to get the ball work clear. And Bonner certainly didn't enjoy that little spell of action I'm sure happy to see the ball clear here's Vata big state breaks in the right playing it in early this time for McAvenny the chance is on for Slater who would believe it well chances just cannot come any better than that and Stuart Slater who's only scored once for Celtic. Had a great chance here, and the ball skids away from John Martin, and he couldn't get it inside the post. Frustration for Stuart Slater. No luck in front of Gary. Paul McStay. That's for Slater again, trying to knock that in behind Paul Jack, who was quick enough in the recovery. Five minutes left, here's Slater, and denied by Martin. Took up good position there, stolen the blind side, Slater. Right on the near post to get that touch on goal. So an offside decision here, but here was Stuart Slater. Machiavelli's dummy, Slater going in behind him, and good goalkeeping by Martin. Holding up again for Paul McStay. That's Jack. Dummy by Kirkwood. There's Coyle. Coyle again. Andy Smith had to control that quickly. Good recovery work by Boyd. He had a chance there, Smith. Had he been able to control that swiftly? Get a shot on target. Headed away. Which is Caesar, blocked by Slater. On the counter attack, Celtic. Well, this is nonsense now. Unable to bring the ball through that heavy patch in the ground. Caesar forward and an offside flag up. free kick coming in injury time helped on by Collins Galloway again but the final whistle goes the match has been completed Celtic have won by that solid eagle from Tommy Coyne in seven minutes they've seen Frank McAvenny make a promising return to the side but this was all about these awful conditions and really any advocates of summer football should have been here this afternoon. The Celtic fans, though, leaving, I'm sure, perfectly happy to have the points. There's nothing else to be gained from a match in these conditions. But McAvenny, though, a reasonably satisfactory start in Celtic colours again. Deirdre nil, Celtic 1.
Liam, content, I would imagine, with two points. Is that what it was all about today? Yeah, that's what it was all about. Um, I just said to the lads before the game that you're not going to be able to play football in this pitch. Uh, just hit the ball in behind them uh, and then do the best we can, play with it, determination, and we got the point. Now, you had your new front two, Frank McAvenny's first performance, along with Tommy Coyne. What's your reaction to their performance? Well, obviously, it's difficult to judge them on that, on that pitch, but for the first half an hour, even the first half, they looked uh, very good together. They're very experienced players, a pair of them. They made good runs, held the ball up well when it needed to be held up. Uh, they did pretty well. Uh, I was really pleased for Frank because he's coming back. He's got a lot to prove. The pressure's on him, and uh, he did well. Frank, I thought you were too old to play as well as that. Were you pleased with the performance? Yeah, I well, was, especially the conditions. It was, uh, it was a bit heavy for to come back in. But, uh, you know, I made up my mind I was playing 90 when Tommy went off injured, so, uh, you know, I, I thought I lasted well, you know, and I, I, I felt good. Had you mixed feelings at the goal? Uh, well, you guys don't know. I thought it was, I mean, it was a great save for the keeper. I thought it was going in. But, uh, Tommy done what every other striker is supposed to do, you know, follow up. And um, he put it away, so good luck to him. Talk about fitness as being very important for you yeah. playing up here. Did you realise how fit you were to last the full 90 in these conditions? I didn't know. It's uh, you know I've been training. I've not really been playing games. It's, uh, you know the weather's. I would have had a few games by now. So I go out and you know the adrenaline was going with the crowd. The crowd got behind me. And it obviously helps. What about the atmosphere on the pitch? You were here at Celtic before. Yeah, was it different at all? Anyway, was there a confidence no, problem the, in the team? There was a, you know, everyone's a bit quiet. But they came out the other day. You know, you get talking to people, you get them going, and, and it's, uh, you know, you had to laugh at the conditions. It was, uh, <laughs> you know, it was, it was one of them. You know, some, somebody I've seen somebody putting up boards with marks for ten out of diving and all that. It's, it's, uh, it's quite good. Has it convinced you that you can really do a job?